Hello everyone, Josh here with Josh Nam Golf, and I've had a lot of requests over the last week or two to do a video analysis of Bryson DeChambeau. Uh, he's won twice now in the FedEx Cup, and uh, I understand why a lot of people want to see uh, an analysis of his. He does things differently than anyone else on the PGA Tour, from his club setup to the way he swings. And we're going to talk a little bit about those changes, and if there's anything that uh, you may learn from this, it'll help your game. So the first thing we want to talk about is, is Bryson's clubs. And for a lot of you already know this, but he plays the same length iron throughout the bag. So his pitching wedge is the same length as his three iron and everything in between. And they're about the same length as a typical seven iron. I believe they're about 37, 37 and a half inches, somewhere in there. The other unusual th uh, thing is the lie angles are all the same, and they're much more upright than anything that a typical PGA Tour player would play with or anything you'd find at Dick's or Golf Galaxy or anything like that. His irons are actually 73 degrees, and what that means is basically this lie angle here, how upright the shaft is, is 73 degrees throughout the bag. Um, and most irons change about half a degree per club, and your typical six iron or seven irons around 62 degrees. So for the most part, his irons are about 11 degrees more upright, and that helps him swing the way he wants to. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to bring up Robert Rock here for comparison. Now, Robert has what we call uh, a normal swing, um, a very good swing that looks pretty typical of what you see on TV. So as we look at the setup, we can see right away how much more upright the club is for Bryson DeChambeau. We can also see at setup that he wants the shaft angle, this line here, going up his forearms. And so the club makes one straight line up his arms, where on the right we can see with Robert that his hands are hanging much lower. Uh, and the club and the forearms obviously don't come close to making the same angle. So we'll start here on the right. And what do you see from a typical tour player swing? Well, as they take this back, the club will swing parallel to that line and then up above it slightly. Club through the hands here when it gets parallel. And then typically, but not always, you'll see when left arm gets parallel, the club will get much steeper than the original shaft plane line. And then as it comes down, it gets shallow. And as we get to impact here, we will notice that most of the time, not always, but most of the time, at impact, the club is slightly more upright than at address. What you're going to see with Bryson is, is very unusual. Some people call it a one-plane swing or an on-plane swing. But we're going to see as he takes this back here that he's trying to keep the club and does a very good job of swinging up this line the whole time. So as he takes this back, we can see the club swings up this line still on the line, and then as he comes down, also getting back on this line. So at impact, he's right back on it. Then you'll actually see on the follow through, he's pretty much right back on it. And that's what he's trying to do throughout the swing. Um, you can lose a lot of distance by doing this. And obviously to do this, you would need clubs uh, that are the same length with the same line angle throughout the bag if you're gonna make a consistent on plane swing. He has the same setup, whether it's a pitching wedge or a three iron, and tries to make the exact same swing. So pretty interesting. Again, we don't see this much. Uh, he's the first person that's really had any success on the PGA Tour with it, uh, but it's been very successful. Now let's take a look at the face on, and we'll pull up a driver. And I'm going to put Gary Woodland next to him here. And we're going to see a lot of differences here as well. So the first thing you notice... Um, Bryson is stance is very narrow and he's much much more on his left side with the ball more back uh, If I drew a line kind of down from say Gary's nose, we'll say about there And from Bryson's We'll see a pretty big difference there in setup so much more narrow stance uh, and he's leaning much more forward also has a very, Bryson has a very weak grip uh, for the PGA Tour standards. And when I say weak grip, the V's from his thumb and forefinger are kind of pointed off in this direction. Uh, it's a little blurry with Gary, but his are going to be more off in this direction. Uh, so as he takes it back, as Bryson takes this back, 
The first thing is he does not hinge the club up much at all. So as we get to left arm parallel there, we'll take Gary back to left arm parallel, we see a very standard traditional L shape here with 90 degree set of the club. And with Bryson on the right here, very, very little set. We can also see if anything, his head has moved more forward even, and he's still on his left side. So very unusual move with that. Now as we get to the top of the swing, pretty standard position there. Uh, again, head is still forward. And then as we come down, Gary, more than most, really stays behind the ball to hit up on it. And we can see how much tilt Gary has through impact. Bryson isn't going to have nearly that much. Um, he is going to come up a little bit, but we can see stays very uh, centered over the ball. Not a lot of movement. And then again, very wide in that follow through. Not much rehinge at all in it. We can kind of see the difference there um, through the ball. And he tries to do it by keeping the club on plane. So very unusual swing, but there are things to get from this. That he's obviously very consistent with it, believes it's the best method for him, uh, set up his equipment to work for him. So um, whether it'll work for you or not, you never know. Uh, but for him, it's been very successful. He's obviously a, a great ball striker. And lately, since his putting's gotten better, uh, we see him on top of the leaderboard a lot on the PGA Tour. So Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and keep sending in any requests you have and uh, we'll try to make these swing analysis happen. And until next time, good luck on the golf course and thanks for watching.